The very first step is to wash the tomato. And the reason why you want to wash it is because um, unlike the eggplant where we scrape the insides, I am using a food mill to process this. So I really need them clean. Plus it gives you the opportunity to go through the box and remove the ones which are not 100% good. I'll just quickly run through the equipment I'll be using today. Well, of course, we've got the tomato. They've been washed. I put them back into the box. Easier to carry from inside to outside. This is what they call a half of a bushel. So they have it at 25 pounds. I probably lost between four and five pounds due to um, some of them being bad. Small thing, but they have been washed. We'll need a tray, a sort of a baking tray, a large spoon, tongs, a paring knife, and I'll explain why later. And over here, I have what's called a food mill and a bucket. Don't mind the branding there. I am not affiliated with Canadian Tire, but that is where I got the bucket. Um, I washed the bucket with soap and water and bleach, nice and sterile sterilized and this is the food mill we'll be using and, and it comes with three different size grates this one here is the largest because i want the tomato once it's roasted and once we process it here it will have some texture i need that texture to it it's the same sort of texture if you were to crush it in a mortar and pestle which would take a lot of work man a lot of energy the other thing you can use is a food processor and all we would do the roasted tomato we will and you know it has these clips here it fits perfectly over the bucket i'm going to put it onto here put the tomato in there and then we're going to spin it like so you'll see it in a, in, a, in a few minutes but that is the sort of setup here that we need you'll obviously also need the containers where you'll be well that you'll be using to freeze the processed tomato yo and the thing about this yeah every the end of summer into fall you see all the italian families and if you want tiktok right now you'll see what i'm talking about processing crates and bushels and bushels and crates or whatever you want to call it of tomatoes for their tomato sauce for the entire winter and yo i was invited five six years ago to be part of one of these tradition kind of thing the entire family was there there was everybody had a part to play they were passing it on the the information to to the younger generation and stuff like that and the food after was just spectacular so yeah this reminds me of that experience that i had and there's no reason why you can't make this you know you can i'm using 25 pounds but all of your family members can get together and you guys can make a bigger bunch and make a day out of it you know roast and i, I shared the eggplant one with you all for making bike and choker during the um winter months same thing you know you you set up your eggplant you set up your um, tomato station you have all your family over and everybody's part of it and you know build a tradition kind of thing there's no reason why we can't do it too that's basically what i am saying the last thing i want to mention is if you recall if you saw that eggplant the roasted eggplant video i did i ran out of propane make sure you have propane or whatever fuel source that you're using a charcoal grill much better flavor and taste to the overall tomato choker later on when you make it yeah one more question you guys may have and it's a common question after i posted the clip about the bygone choker on on instagram was chris did you add anything else all I'm and you know in that in that video I I, I roasted peppers and I put a piece a, a whole pepper in the um, in the same container that I froze it. No, this time it's just the process the roasted. We're gonna use the food mill and then whatever falls into the bucket that goes into our container and that is it no salt no garlic no pepper nothing. Later on when I make it that's gonna be the fresh burst that I give to brighten up things in the middle of winter when it's minus 40 degrees Celsius. We've got a nice hot grill. Well, the time I took to add the tomato on top, it cooled down a bit, but one of the things I wanted to show you here is, I'm just gonna grab one of these. I hope you guys can see that, but I removed the sort of stem area, it's sliding, the sort of stem area, and on all of them, that where that core is, the and I'll show you what I mean. 
this area here is what I removed with a paring knife and all you do is go in a circular motion remove that because that takes a long time to break down yeah a really long time to break down and we are trying to be out here for a long time plus it'll make work easier later on and I'll show you how why but that's my one tip is using paring knife it will take a few minutes but remove the stem area it's been about 10 minutes on that high heat I have to flip them over and I'm gonna have to reach over so what I did was I turned the heat down to low whilst I flip them and you see that char that you see in there those black marks that there is pure flavor that is what and the reason why we flame them now here's the thing you can do this in the winter time in your indoor oven you can put on the broil setting no problem you can stick it in the microwave no problem you can roast it on the stove top no problem let me zoom in but nothing absolutely nothing beats the flavor you would get yo people even boil them my mom boils them as well too you can boil the tomato boom they cook and you can you know mash them up and make your you know get your, your choker on but nothing beats the flavor of that char that roast that fire man is it ever good so i'm going to continue flipping lid back down turn the heat back up and just like that we're back my heat is still on high what I wanted to show you all is every grill that I've ever owned usually has a hot spot my hot spot is in the front here and down to the back over here so you'll notice and, and you know these are the smaller tomato in the front here I am going to start removing those and that is why I have my tray these are all grilled off now if you want it to allow them to cool the skins will just slide straight off yeah however in my case since I'm using the food mill all I need to do is to keep spinning keep adding more and you know, all that lovely goodness is dropping in the bottom of the bucket there and it's just a matter later on of collecting it yeah putting it into my containers my freezer containers just gonna move these down a little the big pieces of skin will come to the top here and I'm on golden see notice all the skin that's left back there that I'm gonna scrape out into the rubbish man this food mill here makes things so much easier I just put the second batch of tomato on there I'm gonna crank up back my heat lid on and we're just gonna repeat the process of roasting them off and flipping them and and doing we thing you know what I mean I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but these are Roma tomatoes. Um, I think in the Caribbean, I think I've seen them being called plum tomato as well too. I like using these tomatoes simply because there's less liquid in there and it's more meaty, less seeds as well too, and I find they're not as tart. Now, some people like tart tomato for making their tomato choker. I'm on, not so much. So, Roma tomato, if you can source it will be give you the best end result the other thing i want to mention if you're based in the caribbean and, and you know in in canada right now we're getting this yo i said 888 for 25 pounds do the math it's about 40 something cents a pound that is really cheap because during the winter months well especially after covid there we were paying close to three and four dollars a pound now is the time we would usually get it at, from the farmers market and from the farms and the grocery stores and everywhere else really cheap but I also know there are times in the Caribbean especially Trinidad and Tobago my dad used to plant tomato in a big way as well too so I noticed for a fact sometimes it's very cheap relatively cheap that is in the market so I would suggest yo doing something similar and those days when tomatoes are expensive boom bam you guys have access to your tomatoes for your choker Yo, this makes a wicked tomato sauce for pasta as well, eh? but we'll get to that another day. For now, let me continue roasting this and then we'll finish up things. It took about an hour, hour and a half or so to get it all done. What I wanted to show you, I have these 12 ounce containers, which I got at a local restaurant supply store. Any place where restaurants shop, you will find them. And I bought 50 of these and if you saw the 
um, bygone Fuka video that I did. It, you get the lids as well. It's just going to snap on nice and sturdy. And if you saw that video, you would have seen this is the exact same container that I bought. We're just going to... Well, here's the thing about these containers. And you, you need to get your portion size correct and when i say portion i mean how many people are going to be eating once you make your tomato choker in my case one of these 12 ounce will be enough but once you're filling it you need to leave and my hands are dirty i'm embarrassed about my hands and my fingernails and everything else but i've always complained to people who have dirty fingernails all they're nasty cut all their flicking nails and clean up anyhow leave about one centimeter or about half of an inch from the surface because once the lid goes on that frozen liquid will tend to push up and next thing you know you go if you overfull it you will find <laughs> your lid hovering in the freezer what i would also mention is if you want to put some tape on there some masking tape and put what just write down with a sharpie marker or something that it is for tomato choker because once it's frozen you won't be able to tell the difference between your meat sauce your chili your tomato sauce your tomato for making tomato choker so i would recommend putting the name on there i'm just going to fill these up now and then we'll wrap up the video just gonna hit that and mix and mix just to make sure everything is incorporated nicely my sauce here my sort of tomato is very chunky you can see that is how I like my choker. And you notice it's not watery because I say, like I said, and there's, there isn't a lot. Of, well, in that case, yeah, there's some seeds, but for the most part, there isn't a lot of seeds. Yeah. Um, if you wanted, you can remove the skin and you will see these sort of black bits there. That is because when I used the food mill, I left the skin on and some of the black bits and that your know, flavor lives there. I know they're focusing on my fingernail now and thinking, well, Chris, how are your fingernails so nasty? Well, I, I, was, I was working. Anyhow, you can play around with the texture. If you peel the tomatoes before you process it, you will get a much smoother um, consistency. But for now, this is all Uncle Chris needs. And I'm just going to put the right amount into my containers, like so. Be mindful, it is hot, so you may burn your hands. If you're not careful and you see I left that space there and I'm just gonna continue filling these bad boys up and I'm telling you the middle of winter man I'm just gonna be loving myself because I man could just tore this out and tore it out on your kitchen counter first or in your fridge don't stick it in the microwave um, yo, you're doing an injustice to it by sticking it in the microwave then after it tours completely put it into a saucepan or something on a very low heat and bring it up to temperature before you add your garlic and your onions and everything else sup soldiers listen if you enjoy this recipe i'd really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and click that bell notification thing if you've made the recipe take a picture and send it to me email address down here i mean trying to tell people the email address them butts will take the address and do all kind of thing with it and tag me on instagram at caribbean pot i really appreciate you guys and thanks for being in my kitchen with me today Irene, i got 12 containers ready for the freezer but we must and we spoke about this in the last video we must allow this to cool completely then we're going to put the lid on there then boom into the freezer a great way not only to have your roasted tomato with that char flavor during the winter months if you live in north america or europe or wherever where um winters can be harsh yo the other thing is if you live in the caribbean and i mentioned this in my stories i believe um on, on instagram there when it's cheap when tomato in season and cheap and you know that's a that's a beauty about it eh? it is in season now this is not from a greenhouse where there's absolutely no flavor in the tomatoes whatsoever you see so much flavor the bee coming yo be looking to make honey out of the sweetness out of this roasted tomato chris here caribbeanpot.com take advantage of the weather right now take advantage of the price of the tomatoes take advantage of the fact that it's fresh from the fields when you get it visit a local farmer talk to them you may even get the cheaper who knows but the point is yo and make it into a family thing you know i mean everybody can help out you know 
even the little ones in them and they will pass that on to their kids Irie, Irie. what's up soldiers don't forget to click subscribe if you've already clicked subscribe hit that bell notification thing i want to all you missing out on the new videos man come on click